dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. Your CV is one of the most important documents you will ever create. Pretty much every job you apply for requires one from you. It is your potential employer's first time to take a constructive look at your accomplishments and abilities, on paper at least. Thanks to the economic effects of the pandemic, the jobs market is only getting more competitive. You will often find yourself being pitted against more candidates than ever before, so nailing your CV is vital. Get it right and you'll find yourself at the interview stage. At this point, the employer knows they like you and would like to seriously consider employing you for the role. A poor CV, conversely, leaves you in a constant loop of job rejections and disappointment. So let's try and help you build a top-class CV that will grab the attention of potential employers with a few simple tips. Number one, the basics. There's no gold standard structure for a CV, but there are sections that any employer would expect to find in the document. I'll go into this a little bit more detail later when I compare academic and industry CVs, but for now, you just need to remember the following. For any role, the organisation wants to know how well educated you are, and perhaps more importantly, how experienced you are. They also want to get this information as easily and accessibly as possible. More on this later too. In simple terms, your CV should contain personal contact details, education and qualifications, your career path so far with details of experience, relevant skills to the job, and maybe some of your personal interests or achievements, although this is not as necessary for academic CVs. References will also be expected, but to save space, I tend to just opt for the standard references can be provided upon request as you often submit them separately. Some of these categories are a little vague, but I'll expand on them later. Before we move on though, spell check your CV. Typos are the quickest way to get a job rejection. They tell the employer you don't take the time to ensure you're doing things correctly. Spell check, spell check, and spell check. Good, let's move on. Number two, presentation. How do you get someone to look at your CV in detail when they have 200 to go through? Simple, it has to pop. That doesn't mean pages of bright colored Comic Sans text but you want to avoid a dense set of paragraphs of black text on a plain white background. There is a delicate balance to be struck here, but it is possible to make a CV attractive to look at while also appearing professional. I could write paragraphs of a step-by-step guide for making an attractive CV, put a divider here, add this section there. Really, your best resources here are Google, and if you're at a college or university, your careers team. They can help you create a template that's both eye-catching and oozes professionalism. It's all personal choice, But if you read this article, you'll find a link to a template that I quite like within. Number three, tailor your CV. This next point is so important. Your CV is supposed to be a working document. I've got maybe 20 different versions of my CV, each one tailored for a specific job application. The aim of your CV is to tell the employer that you are the right person for the job. You need to highlight how you fit the specific requirements of the role by emphasising aspects of your expertise and education that align best with the job description. Never lie, you'll always get found out. But if the job is, for example, a stem cell specialist and you've worked with stem cells, make sure this is emphasised on your CV before you add the other experience and expertise you have onto it. You don't have to rewrite the whole thing, just adapt the details so that they're relevant. Number four, have a professional cover letter. Um, Along a similar theme, it is always good to have a cover letter, even if they don't ask for it. To keep it professional, I like to use the same template for my cover letter as for my CV, so they match nicely. The length of the cover letter will depend on the application process. A lot of jobs these days require you to prepare something along the lines of an application statement. This is normally a separate document where you write a short essay explaining your expertise and why you're suited for the role. If the application does not require this, I recommend including something like that into your cover letter. Introduce yourself, explain your desire for the role, and detail why you are the right person to do it. If you're preparing a separate application statement, your cover letter can be a simple Dear Dr. Professor X, I am writing to formally state my desire to apply for, insert job title. A CV and an application statement explaining my expertise and suitability for this role are attached. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any further questions. Best regards. Number five, keep it condensed. Back to the point on making your CV easy to read and digest. Nobody wants to read a 10-page CV. A good CV is one that gets the key points across concisely and without waffling. A single page is perhaps a dated rule. Most employers are now happy with a two-page CV as it is difficult to get everything on a single page. Generally, you don't want to exceed two pages. 
The best advice I can give is to use bullet points. They can get a lot of information across in a condensed and digestible manner. Most employers will skim read first to determine if your CV is worthy of further investigation. Having lots of handy bullet points helps them to do that more easily. Number six, industry versus academic CVs. This is the last piece of advice I have and it's pretty important but quite specific to those looking for a job in science. If you're not a scientist, it might not be as relevant, so apologies in advance. Academic and industry jobs usually require very different CVs. What is important to an academic employer is not necessarily important to an industry employer. That's not always the case. A research-focused company may want a more academic CV, but usually the following structures apply. So for academic, my CV has the following sections. Let's cue some bullet points. Firstly, an academic profile, which is a short bullet-pointed list of key details, expertise, publications, funding awards, etc. Next, career and research experience, where I have details of my undergrad, PhD, and previous research posts with an accompanying list of all the experimental techniques that I have learned. Next, research publications. As you would expect, this is just a list of papers I've published and any that are under review. Awards and funding. Again, this is pretty self-explanatory. Include every bit of money you've ever been awarded, no matter how small. Teaching experience. This section contains any lecturing I've done and any research students BSc to PhD, whose projects I've had an input on, however small, it's always good to add that to your CV. And finally, selected conferences and symposia attended. So here I try and include at least one conference a year, preferably where I've delivered a presentation or an invited talk. The best thing you can do here is try to vary things a little bit. You don't want to show employers you attending the same conference every year and giving the same talk. Now for an industry CV, the structure is a little different. We start with a profile, similar to the academic profile, but with a few more bullet points and a focus on lab competencies and things like GMP, GLP, things that industry employers will be interested in. They're probably not interested in how many papers you've published in this section. Then key achievements, another bullet pointed list. This is where I briefly mentioned how many papers I've published and how much funding I have secured. I also list things like clinical studies I've worked on, how many conferences I've spoken at, and my experience in establishing research beacons. If you've done a PhD or any research project, technically you've set up a research beacon, so you can weave that in here. Career. Here I list every science job I've had and write a paragraph on each, listing my duties, the experience I gained. It's important to not just include lab experience, but also to mention things like supervising researchers, IT competencies, and any industry-relevant experience, like ethics and risk assessments. Next, education. Here I just list my PhD and BSc. If you're applying straight from undergrad, you could include things like A-levels if the job description requires it. Lab skills are re required. If you have any of the lab skills they need, say so in this section and then add in any others that may be relevant. Mine is divided into three subsections based on following key areas, cell culture, molecular biology, and biotechnology. You could do something similar. And finally, management experience and references. For management experience, I list any students or projects I've ever seen. This is as close as you get to management experience at PhD and postdoc level. If you have other management experience, put it in here too, and then references provided upon request. That's about it really. Once you're happy with your CV, send it to a professional colleague or friend to get their opinion and good luck. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.